thank you for taking us live. It's lovely to be together. Um, so Doreen, you're not teaching, correct? No, you are. No, it's next week. You were supposed to, I don't no, know. Who's I, teaching. I was, I was, I am teaching. Teach, I am but... teaching. This is Pam. Oh, I'm oh hi, Pam. Hi, Wonderful. Debbie asked me to do it. Yeah. Terrific. Uh, Pam, okay. Pam jumped okay. in for me. So, so Marcia, do you teaching. have the slides and everything? Debbie has. Okay. okay. Debbie said she'd have the slides. I, I have. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Well, I don't see Debbie and I don't see Toby, so we're all going to wing it together. All right. I, so I uh, welcome. Fair. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Marion. Um, so good morning. Good afternoon. It's nice to be together. We've had a great week. Um, everybody is here. And uh, I know at the beginning we talked about um, some good things that happened this week, which is better than the than some bad things. And uh, it's just nice to be together. I'm looking forward to Shabbat. <laughs> uh, long week. I know many of you feel the same way. And um, it's just, it's, uh, let's see. So I do see a new face and a new name. And if you feel comfortable, we'd love to have you introduce yourself. If not, hang in there with us and just enjoy, enjoy the ride. Um, you can let you can private chat me and let me know if you'd like to introduce yourself and tell us who you are, but I do see a new face. Um, so let's start. Marsha, do you want to put up a slide and we'll see where we're going? And um, whoever is doing that part, maybe you can. I know Marion said that she's uh, yeah. doing Misha Vera for us. Okay. Misha Vera. Avo tenu makor ha bracha imo tenu may the source of strength who bless the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say amen. <coughs> Isha Beherach, Imohotenu, Makor Habracha, Lafohotenu, bless those in need of healing with Rafua Shlema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say, ah, ah, Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Marianne. Rufa Shlema to all of those, all of those who need their need our um, our thoughts and our blessings and our prayers. Thank you, Marianne. Um, I'm doing um, this. Okay, is, um, Are you doing okay, it? I, Did you sign up with anyone, or is it just you? Because no, I don't have a. Well, it's, only, it's only five lines. Okay, go for it, Ruth. She took it away. Yep. <laughs> Adonai is sovereign, crowned with splendor. Adonai reigns, robed in strength. You set the earth on sure foundation. You created a world that stands firm. Your kingdom stands from earliest time. You are eternal. The rivers may rise and rage, and the waters may pound and pulsate. The floods... You took it away. <laughs> The floods may swirl and storm. Yet above the crash of the sea and its mighty breakers is Adonai, our God supreme. Your decrees, Adonai, never fail. Holiness befits your house for eternity. Amen. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you. Sorry, I'm having trouble with my mouse, but I'm working. Okay. And, uh, all right, um, and I know Lee Moore is reading the prayer for Ukraine. It's all right, Marcia, take your time. It's okay. Thank you. Holy One, source of strength, war has begun and innocent people are dying. We ask for your protection for Ukraine and its citizens. We pray for their safety and security of the country. May this terrible war be diffused swiftly with minimal casualties. May Hungary, Poland, and other neighboring countries be moved to open their borders and provide safe passage for all who wish to evacuate. Bless our world leaders with the ability to work together for the greater good 
and the wisdom to make wise decisions during this turbulent time. Bless the people of all nations with the desire, strength, and courage to create a world based on justice and filled with peace. We seek the comfort of believing that everything will be all right, yet it is hard to hold on to the hope in the face of insurmountable odds. <clears throat> May the words of Isaiah, nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore, become true in our day in this very hour. Source of goodness, shine your healing light on, the, on us and those in Ukraine we hold in our hearts. Shelter us, shield us, show us the path to peace. Thank you, Limor. And we, uh, we continue to send our blessings for peace um, to that part of the world. Um, so let's see, Pam. Yes. We, yes. Welcome, we welcome the opportunity to learn from you today, Pam. Thank and, you. Um, do you have slides? Is Marsha helping you with that or? Um, I thought someone was going to be. Yeah, those are my yep, slides. There we go. Okay. All right, Pam. So, OK. Go. OK. Uh, well, thank you for giving me this opportunity um, to share with you. This is my debut sharing with this group, and I'm very happy to do so. Um, so uh, this week's Parsha is Parsha Shlach, Shlach Lecha, Numbers chapter 31, verses one, um, verse one, and then through chapter 15, verse 41. So the title of this week's Parsha, Shlach Lecha, means send for yourself. And as I explore this text with all of you, I think you will see many ways in which these words describe the Parsha. It will also become clear why the book of Joshua is the Haftarah that accompanies this week's Parsha. So the Parsha opens with the Israelites getting ready to enter the land of Canaan from the south. And in anticipation, Moses chooses scouts <clears throat> or spies to assess the strength of the indigenous population and their fortresses and to investigate the land's productivity. But what is really being assessed is the faithfulness of the scouts and of the Israelites. Only two of the scouts, Caleb and Joshua, remain enthusiastic about going into the land to conquer it. Um, the faithlessness of most of the spies threatens Israel's existence if they were going to go ahead and enter. Um, you can't you know, go into a war if you are sure that you're going to lose. And it also threatens Moses's leadership. Um, the entire population begins to rail against Moses. And this is the first slide that I have in verse 14. Um, according to the Torah, a women's commentary, let us head back in Hebrew can also be interpreted as let us appoint a leader, meaning that the Israelites are ready to replace Moses and choose a leader who will take them back to Egypt. And for trope lovers like myself, um, under the word in, in Hebrew, you could see it in Safaria or other, you know, other uh, sources for the Hebrew, under the word tov, meaning good, in Numbers 14.3, it would have been better or would have been good for us if to return to Egypt, is a mercha kefula which is a double mercha. A mercha is a little trope sign that's very common in Hebrew, um, but a mercha kefula is much less common and it's used to um, indicate a very strong emphasis. And it also has a different melody than the mercha, regular mercha. So I thought that was interesting that under the word tov, they emphasize that especially with the trope signs. So back to the narrative, um, God, God's anger against the Israelites is kindled and Moses appeals to God's ego saying in effect, and you can go, yeah, thank you. Saying in effect that after all the miracles God worked to get the Israelites out of Egypt to cause them to perish now would make God look weak in the eyes of other gods, other nations, uh, in other words, you know, well, what would the neighbors think? I just think that's just a fascinating um, peek into the theological culture of the time and the way uh, God's God was perceived. 
at the time. Uh, but the report of the spies brings up a number of contradictions, ones that Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs and the recent Lubavitcher Rebbe of both of blessed memory discuss, and I will touch on here. Is it just faithful, faithlessness that prompts the spies' negative report? After all, each of the spies, as we recall, has personally witnessed and participated in the miracle in which God caused the defeat of the world's mightiest army. So that a, a ragtag bunch of slaves, uh, you know, were set free from the most powerful nation on earth. And they've all lived through this. So doesn't it fly in the face of reason to doubt that God can assist the Israelites at this point? And also, the spies were wrong about the supposed superhuman strength of the Canaanites, as read in the book of Joshua, this, this week's Haftarah. Rahab, the woman who shelters Joshua at Jericho, describes how the Canaanites are greatly afraid of the Hebrews because they'd heard of the miracles of the Exodus. And apparently the Israelites knew that God was feared among the nations as well because they extolled this fact in the Song of the Sea. So I'd like to digress for just a minute um, on a fat, what I think is a fascinating Hasidic tale, which tries to explain why the Israelite spies may have perceived the Canaanites to be giants. According to this story, uh, the giant Canaanites were actually former angels who had boasted to God that because they had never sinned, they could be more righteous than the humans that God had created. God said, well, you never sin because you're angels and you don't have to deal with the temptations of the animal soul. But if you think you can do a better job, I'll send you to earth as humans and we'll see. So God sent the angels to earth. They became big uh, Canaanites. And sure enough, they ended up literally being the biggest sinners on earth. So I just thought that was a fascinating story. So as the Rebbe points out, the spies were leaders, chieftains of their respective tribes. Even if the Canaanites were giants, even if that was true, would this be enough for the spies to lose heart? And after all, you know, these were chieftains. These were men used to facing fear, used to having strong leadership capabilities. So that's another contradiction. And the Rebbe makes the point that the spies were not afraid of, of failure. They were afraid of success. With success, they knew their way of life would completely change. They would go from being nomads, entirely dependent and living in close contact with God in the desert to a people who have to create a civil society. They would have to create laws regarding the ownership of property, stewardship of the land, they would go from being the underdog to being the aggressor. They would have to go from being slaves to being free people and assume personal and communal responsibility. As the Rebbe points out, the spies were leaders, chieftains. Oh, I already said that, sorry. With Moses' intervention, God does not destroy the Israelites, but condemns them to wander in the desert for 40 years so that none of the adults who are part of the Exodus will enter the promised land except Joshua and Caleb. The Torah clearly presents this as a punishment. And perhaps this is my own very 21st century interpretation, but I think it can be argued that the 40 years of wandering was a necessary process to get the Egypt, the slave mentality out of the Hebrews after the Hebrews had gotten out of Egypt. And I find a personal message here. At Passover, we each see ourselves as if we've been personally liberated. On Shavuot, we see ourselves at Sinai. But with all these momentous external events happening around us, is our internal liberation keeping up? Or do we still in some way seek the comfort of some kind of slavery? There's a spiritual aspect to wandering in a desert. It's no accident that spiritual retreat centers are often located in the wilderness, in the mountains of the Western desert or in a beautiful oceanside spot. 
Being surrounded by nature helps us feel closer to God, closer to our core essence as humans. However, at some point, we must get back to reality, the messy business of living in community. But living in community doesn't mean living apart from God and our spiritual strength. There's a phrase in our Midrash that states that God seeks a dwelling in the lower worlds. Rabbi Sachs points out that while some religions seek to lift people to heaven, Judaism seeks to bring heaven down to earth. God wants the Jewish people to have a model society where rulers are not worshiped as gods and far from it. Where law is applied to rich and poor alike, where the land is respected and allowed to rest, and where no one is destitute. As Rabbi Sachs puts it, all these things are ways of bringing the Shekhinah into the shared spaces of our communal life. And I just, that's, that verse just really resonates with me. I actually thought about it as I woke up this morning. I just think it's very powerful and comforting. And um, I think you can go to the next slide, please. I think that there can be parallels drawn between this parsha and the modern state of Israel, a country that aspires to be a light unto the nations, as it says in Deuteronomy 4, 6, and at the same time, a nation like any other, as in the Israeli Declaration of Independence, whose right to exist must be respected. So you could go to the next slide. I think I have some of those quotations. Okay, yes, that was, yep, that is um, from Exodus and you can keep going where we, in Deuteronomy, I believe there's a verse, there's the Deuteronomy verse. And then you can also go to the next slide from the Israeli Declaration of Independence. So to me, Judaism is bringing God, is about bringing God into this struggle as citizens of whatever country we live in and as Jews. So thank you all for allowing me to share this week's Parsha with you. And if there's any time for discussion, um, I don't know if there is, so Debbie can let me know, but- um, we, have, we have a minute or two, Pam, okay. if anyone wants to ask you a question. Okay, any, or anything that resonates with you personally about, about this week's Parsha. I love how you tied it into the modern state of Israel. Yeah, I, I really think that's the case. I mean, really the modern state of Israel, now we're going to elections yet again, you know, yet again. is struggling to live out this vision, not only of its founding people, but of the, you know, the grounding of this, this Torah portion and um, our roots. Um, so I just think it's, I think this Parsha is very powerful for me personally, and I, I can see it being played out still in modern life. It's definitely a Torah portion that we can uh, read and have a lot of different um, opportunities to find something in it that resonates with us. And um, every time you read a Torah portion, you can apply it to what's happening that day in that moment. And this is one of them. Yes, thank so. you, yeah. Yeah. So thank you, Pam. I you know this was your first time and we look forward to hearing you again. Thank you so much. You're and, welcome. Uh, I enjoy doing it. So great. And, and thank you so thank much you. for doing it. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. All right. Um, so I think uh, Barbara told me that she's reading. Barbara Finkel is reading the Kaddish list. Is that right, Barbara? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? We can. Oh, great. Okay. So um, before today, you do that, Barbara, Barbara, before you do that, I wanted to ask if there's anyone that wants to add a name to the list. Okay. All right, Barbara, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Okay. Today, we lovingly remember Dolores Goldich, Fred Cohn, V. Reynolds, Carol Gelber, Matt Yosefat, Marsha Belgorod, Dr. Warren Blaker, Tova Batyakov, and Avraham, Avraham Bat Yaakov. May their memories always be for a blessing. Thank you. And um, no one signed up to lead the Kaddish. Would anyone like to do that? Okay, if you put the slide up, I will do that. Marsha.
Thank you, Marsha. Okay. Yit gadal v'yit gadash shemei rabba. Amen. Yilma divrach hibrute v'yamlich malchute v'chayechon uviyomechon uvchaye dechol beit Yisrael. Bargala uvizman kariv v'yamru. Amen. Yehesh Yehe Shama Rabba Min Shamaya, Bechayim Alenu Bial Kol Yisrael, Viemru Amen. Amen. O Se Shalom Bim Ramav, Huya Se Shalom, Alenu Bial Kol Yisrael, Viemru Amen. Amen. Okay, so I understand we have a birthday on Monday and we won't be together, so um, I. Let's see. Just who might that birthday be, Limor? Limor, did she leave us? She's muted. Yeah, she's there, but she's muted. So it's Limor's birthday on Monday. And i um, looking for somebody to lead us in happy birthday. Who would like I to can. do that? Who said that? Marlene. Marlene. Adele. Perfect. Marlene, Adele, maybe you could do it together. Go for it. Well, All righty. Okay. How high or low do you want to start, Adele? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lord. Happy birthday to you. And many more. We ta, ta, ta. ta 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 <laughs> right all we right Lamar, we wish you a happy healthy wonderful year and uh, we know you have a lot of things happening this year so we wish you a good year a good year um so if you uh have not signed up for the women's day of study on sunday i hope that you will do that the registration is available to you in women's league week this week and Somebody's got some noise going. It's I don't know what it is, but um, but anyway, uh, please sign up and please join us on Sunday. It's a wonderful program. It's I think it's the twenty fourth um, Women's Day of Study in Israel. And as many of you know, until uh, COVID started, they were all in person, um, and many of us in the states and Canada could not attend. But now that uh, COVID has made everything virtual and on Zoom. We've all been able to attend three or four times a year on the day of study. And um, this one proves to be almost as, almost or just as, or even as wonderful as the last few that we've been able to attend. So I would ask you, please support the day of study. It's a uh, Women's League supports it with Schechter Institute and with the Masorti movement in Israel. And it's really um, an opportunity for us to learn with our Israeli sisters in their kahilot, and I would ask you to sign up and um, be a part of it. So, yeah. yes, and have the Zooms gone out? Because I did register, but I haven't received anything. They have not. They have not. They Thank have you. not. Okay. So, hey, Debbie, um, can I just say something, sure. please? Yeah, Doreen. Okay, mm -hmm. so I just I wanted to thank Pam for jumping in and filling in today. Um, because I was supposed to be doing it, but I didn't know where I was going to be today, and I'm glad I'm here, but Pam, you did a great job. Oh, thank and you. You're most welcome. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. And what Debbie said about everybody picking something different, you looked at it totally different than what I was going for, so okay. it was really, really interesting. Oh, good. Okay. Great. Okay. And thank you, Doreen. Judy Kenter, did you want to say something related to Doreen? Yes, you did. Of course you did, Judy. <laughs> and Eva, for you, I want to say that we are so all glad and we mm -hmm. at Makam uh, made a contribution uh, from the Sunshine Fund in honor of your quick recovery. 
Thank you. Thank you. I have to take it easy for a month, um, but I, I'll be here as much as I can. I appreciate it. Oh, I, I we, all, we also, also, and I, I, I just want to say, Geraldine, also, we made a contribution in mm -hmm. honor of your wonderful new status. Kola Kavod. Thanks. Yo, thank you. Yo, thank you, Judy, for, uh, you know, doing that part of this important job and, and really, uh, taking care of what, who we are and what we are in this and, and maintaining this holy community. We thank you, Judy, for the work that you do. Yes, so yes. everybody, um, it's been a great week, another week of being together, another week of doing the work we do. And, um, I wish you all a peaceful, meaningful and restful Shabbat. Uh, amen. So anybody Shabbat else? Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And with, with that, um, in loving memory of Audrey, together we say, Y'all come, come back, back here. 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 Here.